7 a.m. and at the famous gates of 54 University Avenue, hundreds of journalists from all over the world were already queuing to hear from the defiant daughter of Burmese democracy, Aung San Suu Kyi. It was from behind these gates that the Nobel laureate promised her long tyrannized people freedom from fear during her nearly 20 years under house arrest. Now the world's press is here for a news conference to be held by the woman Barack Obama hailed as a hero on the steps of this very house just two years ago. The gates up there, they've been changed and the political landscape has changed too, on the face of it. This has been cast as a great democratic transition, particularly by some governments abroad. But it isn't really, is it? Because ultimately the generals will still be in charge. It's certainly not a great democratic transition. Okay. Whether it is or not, we'll have to not wait to see it. after the elections. Because as I said, already the election process is proving to be less than totally free and fair. If we win the, in the, the, the elections, it would be a great leap into democracy, yes. Aung San Suu Kyi alleged fraud and intimidation of her party's supporters and candidates. The constitution bars her from becoming the president because her children have foreign citizenship. But today she threw down the gauntlet to the Myanmar military. The constitution says nothing about somebody being above the president. I said I'm going to be above the president. Oh. Oh, I've already made plans. Thank you very much. Quite what she intends isn't clear, but the constitution, she said, would not present an impossible obstacle. After nearly five decades of dictatorship and economic stagnation, the generals released Aung San Suu Kyi in 2010. A hybrid quasi-civilian administration took over. President Thane Sein, a senior ex-general, launched a charm offensive, engaging in talks with Aung San Suu Kyi and releasing hundreds of political prisoners. His bid to shed the regime's pariah status was working. Barack Obama applauding what he called Burma's dramatic transformation. David Cameron met Thane Sein too, seemingly impressed with the progress. But today Aung San Suu Kyi branded all the supposed change a veneer. If you're tempted to think that the leopard has changed his spots, don't be fooled. Many of Myanmar's top brass may well now wear suits, but they still call the shots. Even if her party wins this election outright, the country's most popular politician will still be unable to claim her crown because the military has made damn sure that Burmese democracy will remain on a very short leash. So the military will still have its stranglehold on this country? Military for one-fourth of the whole legislative body and it has the authority to appoint the Minister or Ministry of Defence, Ministry of Home Affairs, etc. On top of that, there will be the national, uh, the, the, the council, the national kind of the security council and without the will of army, none of the political party could do much. Two weeks ago, the government sought ceasefires to end 15 separate ethnic insurgencies, but only eight signed up. Heavy fighting continues in the northern Shan and Kachin states. Millions of people in rebel-held areas won't be able to vote. The million-strong Muslim Rohingya minority in Western Burma have been denied the vote, struck off voter lists, political candidates barred, rights revoked. Channel 4 News filmed in one camp for displaced Rohingya two days ago, and they don't even have faith in Aung San Suu Kyi to ride to their rescue. I don't think Aung San Suu Kyi will help. If she wins, nothing will change. I was upset when I found out the Rohingya were not getting the right to vote. In 1990, my father was able to vote. We were able to vote in 2010, but in 2015, we are not allowed to vote. This is just discrimination. Democracy activists claim that around half of the 33 million Burmese technically eligible to vote this weekend won't be able to. Only 26 Muslims have been approved as candidates, among more than 6,000 standing. 
Yet Muslims make up 5% of Myanmar's population. Minorities have been the scapegoats in a battle between political rivals. It's all about politics. That's why we've been discriminated against. And it's been fueled by hate speech. If it goes on like this, the rights of minorities will disappear altogether. Pictures of ex-general and incumbent President Thane Sein on the campaign trail are pretty hard to come by. He hasn't been trying too hard as he knows the military pulled off a constitutional coup years ago. Contrast this with this, last Sunday's Rangoon rally by Aung San Suu Kyi. She's the political superstar here, denied her landslide victory 25 years ago, but convinced now that however flawed this notional transition to democracy may be, her time has definitely come.